Uh, so if you go here into the view panel, so here you will find this drafting view, duplicate view, this legends, keynotes. OK, so these are basically the uh, detail elements OK, where we are uh, utilizing for the uh, each and every activity. So which are the things we are performing? It may be a 3D modeling. It may be the sheet creation, annotation, scheduling, everything. We need somehow this uh, different types of the views and each view has its own uh, area of working or we can say the uh, different capabilities uh, within it. OK. So uh, like any question on yesterday's session about the sheet creation, uh, view placement, then uh, day before yesterday we learned how to render the elements, render the image, exporting and all. So any question? Yes, Anu, Pratik, Aryan. No, sir. OK, great. No, no sir. So, for today's session, I'll we'll start with the tagging element. So what is the tagging? OK, so if you go to the annotation. Uh, <coughs> tab. So here first tab you will find the dimensions. OK, so like you might well aware about these dimensions. What is the dimensions? How we can place the dimensions? OK, so if you see here, OK, these are the like uh, basic dimensions, like how you people are using in AutoCAD. OK, L align one linear angular. OK, so only few additional parameters you may find inside the Revit. That is nothing but these three parameters. OK, spot elevation, spot coordinate and spot slope. OK, so this radial diameter arc length, this same like all those these things are available inside the AutoCAD as well or any of the 2D CAD layout. So where we know how to align, how to you know, uh, pick the diameter, how to assign the diameter and uh, etc. OK, so many things are there. OK, so now what this new three tools uh, will help out while doing the. Revit modeling or what while giving this uh, creating the 2D sheets or the 2D elevation section uh, or uh, some other drawings. OK, so if you go to the any of the section, uh, let's say I'll go to this section view and I want to you know spot the elevations or height for from the ground level for the particular point. OK, let's say I want to know at what height this door I have placed. OK, or maybe at what height uh, I have placed uh, this table equipment. OK, whatever it is, it, this is not only specifically to the you know, uh, furniture or uh, to the door element, so it is specifically to the MEPF equipments. So maybe you need the height of the cameras or height of the CCTV cameras or the you no know, any of the electrical devices you have placed maybe into the ceiling or maybe into the floor or maybe into the somewhere into the air. OK, so in that scenario, no need to always create a level for the each and every because let's see if I want to uh, know the height for this particular level. So uh, from which like how I uh, uh, create a height. Uh, so one thing is like I uh, easily create one level from this point and I can find the particular height, maybe around 3.4 or 3. Point or 4.4 some uh, meter somewhere. OK, according to in between these two levels. But if you have a spot elevation, just simply click this and click on the icon. OK, at what point you want to measure? OK, so you can see I'm just clicking on top of that particular door. OK, on this corner. And specifying this is my spot elevation for this end. Okay, which is having around 5.18 meter, or we can say 5180 mm from the ground level. So whenever you are defining either spot elevation, spot coordinate, or spot slope, so definitely units are different because elevations always uh, we are specifically measuring into the meter, centimeter, or the mm. Okay or maybe the feet inches spot coordinate somehow we are like it is having a axis means x uh, y and z uh, z values basically okay so i want to know those things then simply again click on the element and just find out the values for the north south okay so here uh, why we we are not getting the xy values basically so whenever we are creating any of the 3d elements or whenever we are creating things uh, with respect to the uh, you know uh, drawing layout or the drawing data okay so if you see initially we discussed about the project base point and survey point okay for project base point and survey point also we have the northing easting southing and the Wasting like these coordinates. OK, the coordinates are belonging from the different directions basically. 
So those points you will get easily from these tools. And suppose uh, you want to find out the any slopes, whether you have given to any of the objects or not. So in that case, you can easily check out the slope value. OK, if you see for this element, no slope I have given. OK, let's say here no slope. So here this slope I have given for this particular roof. You can see. OK, so if I want to measure in terms of a degrees, then you need to change this unit basically. OK, just go here and. Put it into the degrees. OK, then to check unit formats. And. Unit will be the degree. Up to two decimal and the sign. OK, apply it. OK, yeah. So this much slope I have given for this particular roof. OK, I need to check what exactly it is. Yeah, this is the basic roof. If you go to the 3D, you can see. For this particular roof, I have given the slopes 43 point some degrees. OK, now uh, this kind of basically we need to use. So here if you see uh, very few annotations we have given. OK, whenever we are generating the GFC drawing or whenever we are creating some kind of uh, no uh, detail detail drawings up to the DD stage, uh, maybe the 70% or the 100% what we are submitting to the your uh, client or the contractors. OK, in that scenario, your uh, drawings must contain all the annotations required for the project stage. OK, so that is definitely depends on the on the project condition and project scope what they are requiring because in many of the cases uh, cases a uh, few contractors or the few uh, consultants they are only requesting the LOD 500 or the 400 beam bridge model which contains the data. They don't want any kind of a GFC drawings because they already having the 2D sheets or the 2D layout where we are working and converting the 2D to 3D. <coughs> only the thing is we are completely migrating that 2D data or the bunch of the data maybe into the Excel or maybe into the PDF into the real model. So that is the only thing we are doing as a BIM consultant or the BIM experts. But when we are talking about the GFC drawing or the execution drawings, those drawings only need to be produced into the final stage or we can say uh, during the execution of the project. OK, so for that this annotation and the detailing are more par uh, important parameters to be defined on each and every stage of the project. <coughs> project. OK, clear any question on this? About the spot elevation, spot coordinates, spot slope. Why we are using the annotations? What is the need of it? Clear. Yes, sir. OK, perfect. OK, now moving to the tagging part. OK, so now what is the tags? OK, so if you go to the floor plans and if you see any of the door categories, uh, let's say over here, you can see one door is here, one door is here. Maybe here some windows. OK, one window, two windows. OK, so you can see some numbers over here. This is 46. This is 106A, 106B. OK, so this kind of a text uh, basically uh, we called a uh, tags. Now what is a tagging? OK, tagging is nothing but a kind of annotations or kind of information uh, we are providing to an individual element. Now like if I want to calculate the total number of windows into the particular project. OK, so let's say uh, assume. I want to calculate the door. OK, so I'll just consider uh, the BOQ or we can say calculating the doors. So it is showing me the two doors. Now again into the two, I want to segregate which type of the doors I have considered. What is the properties? OK, which type of the doors uh, similar doors I have provided? It may happen like uh, you might aware about like when we are. Uh, creating the sheets, we are giving the door types like D1 will be the no entrance door. D2 will be the no. Uh, connecting doors for one rooms to another room. D3 will be the washroom doors kind of thing. OK, so those D1, D2, D3, this kind of a different sizes or the different types of the doors represent some different scenarios. OK, in these situations in Revit uh, specifically or predefinedly, we can put some kind of a taggings to 
understand the door types or to define the total number of the doors in the schedules. OK, so this is a basic need to uh, provide the different types of the tags. I'm not saying specifically only for the doors. This kind of a tags will be available for multiple functions. OK, so if you go here. Tag by category. OK. Uh, OK, here you can see door tag is available. Planting tag, property line, room tag, window tag. OK, so multiple tags are available. So if you want to. Include something so this generic tag is not available. So I, if I want to load something, so I will go here and I'll search for the annotations. OK, where I will get the multiple tags. OK, so here you will find the different types of the tags. You can see area tag, assembly tag. So now I'm selecting one kind of architecture element, suppose so I'll go to the architectural and here you can see the case work, curtain, door, furniture. So this is my furniture element. I, I hope. Oh yes, this is a table. So what I will do, I'll just simply select this furniture tag. OK, open it. Some or all families selected are not categorized. OK, so this element has been specifically created under the generic family and I'm selecting the furniture family furniture tag. So it is not it is showing me this two elements are not matching properly. OK, so in that scenario we need to select the generic tag. OK, so I need to check whether I have or not. If not, then we need to create or we need to search into the other things. So ceiling ceiling. I think no, I don't have here. Just check generic is available somewhere in this. Yes, generic model tag. OK, open it. Now you can see. I'm easily assigning this particular tag as a generic model. Now this particular tag is not identifying any of the elements for this particular element or for this particular object. Why? Because this is a generic object. I have not defined whether it is a furniture, whether it is a door, whether it is a wall, any element. It don't have any proper name. OK, so this is a, this is the reason it is not showing. The elements OK, so this is something fire. Okay, what is this fireplace hang? I'll just check what exactly it is. Okay, this kind of some different element is not a table or something. It is not a furniture element, I guess. Something they have created like fire uh, fire tank. OK, I don't know the function for this particular element, but they are created. So in this particular uh, element or the object, I need to feed some information. So how we can fill it? Just go here. Go to the edit type and. Place the information, OK? If you want to add something, just go here and add the content. Or uh, just click here and put fire element. You can see like this. So this kind of a numbers or this kind of a changes you need to perform inside this. OK, so this is about the tags. Now here also you can see this kind of a tags they have provided for the doors, for the windows. Maybe for this another furniture, what they have put for the washrooms, for washroom door, different tags are available. Okay, for living rooms, they have provided the room tags. Then for outer surface, they have provided the you know, annotation tabs, uh, which will be required for the levels and tagging of the grid lines and multiple things. Okay, so basically, whichever the elements or whichever the objects that you are going to create inside the Revit uh, environment, for all those elements basically we are providing the tags and those tags to be considered during the schedule or the material takeoff OK, so these things and in addition to that here you will find the some different types of the tags available OK, we generally now spoke about the material tag or the sorry uh, object tags OK, if you go to the material tag you can actually tag the material OK, let's say uh, this brick has made up of the made up of either on the concrete or the uh, no brick. So you want to define that as well. In that scenario, just load the material tag option. Search for this. Civil elements and uh, need to find for the material tags. Go for architectural. Find the material tag is available or not. Just check this.
Just search for material tag where it is. I've seen somewhere uh, recently. Mm, there is no material tag or what? Definitely you will get somewhere you need to check. OK, each and in every of the. OK, so where you will find the tag. OK, material tag. Let's search here. Okay, no material tag. OK, and once you uh, load this, OK, I'm not able to find out right now, but uh, you, you can search in your system. And once you load this, you can define the what kind of a materials you are providing for this particular walls. OK, so this is like this much of information uh, which represents your level of detail basically. OK, the concept of LOD. OK, so that LOD is nothing but when we are providing this much of a details like material, the tagging of each and every element and all. So this is nothing but your model. We are preparing up to the LOD 400 or beyond than beyond uh, the LOD 400. So beyond the LOD 400, it comes the actual things. Uh, sensors, sensor information, all that is not required for the GFC stage. So for GFC stage, maximum what we are giving the data that is up to the LOD 350 or max to max LOD 400. So beyond LOD 400, uh, specifically we are giving the particular model to the facility management or the sustainability. That is advanced part of BIM like 6D and 7D. 